quick photo shoot on the bridge in the Lowther Estate. Looks a bit choppy on Old's water today. Obviously a bit of an erosion coming off the lake. I've washed this tree roots all away completely, so they must have cut it down to make it safe. Stay with them ones. So today's words, Ollie, is what lake is that? Might have to pause this but that sign makes a lot of sense lots of people always ask how the biomass boiler works so here's a quick run through since as i'm away this is basically a walking floor this is the feeding hopper so we tip wood chip in here these little scrapers are wedge shaped so if you have a look the camera down can you see they're like a triangle shape and what they do is they shuffle under the wood chip that way and then as they push back they grab hold of it on that side and shove it that way so any chip that you put at the front here basically walks its way to the back that wall at the back there has a slot underneath about i don't know two foot and the chip then falls through the floor and there's a big hole underneath the floor at the back under that wall into an auger just like you'd have on the front of a combine on the header that pulls the material to the middle of the machine so once the chip falls through there goes into the middle and it drops down then into another auger which then feeds itself up into the boiler so we'll go around now and have a look before we do though i'll just remind that all the south facing roofs on the farm are full of solar panels and that's what provides the electric to run the whole thing so we'll go around now inside the boiler and we'll, we'll see how it works you know the bit of damage there was someone caught with a machine so we're now basically behind that wall we've just been looking at. It's a bit noisy in here. Basically we've got we've got a, this box on the wall here now that the wood chip falls through into this auger at the bottom. Can you see the auger there? So the hydraulic scrapers, these big rams, there's one here. There's three of them operate that walking floor. Sorry, just put my finger over there. Operate that walking floor. Feeds into the middle. Down there. I don't want to drop my phone in. Once it's got in there, it goes up another organ, which is this big red one. And once it gets up to the top, it drops down this drop zone. Now this drop zone is to stop flames ever coming out of the boiler, getting back to the wood chip pile. Not only has it got a drop zone, it's also got this wheel in here, but what they call a cell lock that's got rubber flaps on it. I don't think you remember we replaced it in sort of December time and that turns and again that stops airflow being sucked sorry flames going back and also it means that the boiler can control its airflow for its burn without sucking air through its fuel source once it's gone through the cell lock 
drops into this tube here, which is another auger, which shoves it then into the boiler. So if you look at the computer on the boiler, you'll see better. You've basically got one chip cup of beer, drops down through this, this here and into that big blue box. That big blue box is where it burns it. So we'll go around and have a look where it burns it. As we're walking around here, we're going to go past some pumps. So these pumps, this powers a big fan behind this wall, which we'll have a look at in a minute. This fan powers the grain dry up the yard that used to work off kerosene. So remember, I think two or three weeks ago on a Saturday, I talked about how the other grain dryer now works on hot water. Well, that pumps that. One pumps to the workshop and the offices, and one pumps to the farmhouse. Come round this side now. This is where it burns it inside here. Now, it's full of ash in that little hole there. So what I'm going to do is I wobble the door under the clips on here. Give the door a quick shake. Then the ash will fall out of that hole and the inspection hole. And you'll be able to see better inside. And then we'll see the flames. I'll just undo that clamp. Give it a shake. And there you go. So there's the flames inside now. So basically, it, it takes the fuel in when it needs it. It controls its own airflow again, so it knows what to do. And it turns itself on and off every time the water temperature drops. We, we set the parameters we wanted to turn on and off at. Sorry, I need to use two amps to shut this door with it. Yeah, the door's shut now. Yeah, we set the parameter that, it want, that we want it to burn at. So I think it runs at about 85 degrees. And if the water temperature drops, then it'll automatically fire up and start pumping fuel in. Once it's burnt, inside is what's called a step grate, which is basically lots of little blocks look like stirs. Can't really draw it very well. Let's try up here in the dust. So I suppose the step grate, the steps, these little blocks all move backwards and forwards. A bit like them penny machines that you have in arcades where you drop a penny in the top and then they walk and then eventually the pennies fall off the end. Well that basically burns it on top of this, all the wood. Well it superheats it into gas, burns the gas which then, then produces the heat. It's that efficient, it burns the wood as a gas, not as a wood. Anyway, then it goes on these things that are like them slots that they have in the arcades. And the ash walks to the front, which is here, where this door is. And then falls off a cliff, if you will, about 18 inch drop, into what's called an ash auger. That ash auger then runs from that side of the boiler to this side of the boiler. It ejects the ash out down here. So that ash auger's in the boiler coming out there. And it goes into this one, and this is what we call the incline auger. The incline auger then takes the ash from, from the outside of the boiler, outside the wall, so there's a hole in the wall. This big black thing that's insulated, this is what's called a cyclone, which is a bit like a Dyson Hoover. So any smoke that comes out of the boiler goes through a cyclone and it cleans it up, so it's just clean air that goes out of it. And any ash that, or particles that might be in it then fall out the bottom and go through this here. This is like a small cell lock. Again, the same thing. It's to control the air within the boiler. You need to seal it off, but it also needs to allow it to come out. So it's basically like a paddle wheel. So when, you, when you're blowing air into the boiler for the burn, it's not escaping out the, out the chimney. Well, it is escaping out the chimney, but it's not taking the ash particles with it, or it's not getting airflow from other places that aren't controlled, because the chimney is controlled by that fan, as well as the air going into the boiler. It's controlled by all the little fans on the front of it, which are here down there and up there so you can blow the air in different places to get it to run efficiently this is what's called an inverter this is controlling the speed of the fan I'm now going to show you around the corner so we'll come outside and then we'll go around to the back of the shed and we'll try not to trip over Paul's boat that he's supposed to be painting but he's given up now someone else is going to paint so he's got his boat here in the way so we'll go into the back of the shed be a bit noisy in here now so basically, I'll show you inside. If you can't hear, I'll explain outside. Basically got a big fan here now. This big fan is controlled by that inverter the other side to speed it up and down. And then this is, a, this is basically a big end. The air is coming out the side of this fan. Stand back, you can see it better. Pop the lights blinding it. Anyway, it's a big fan. It's 
sucking air through this radiator on the front. There's this radiator, the little fins inside there, all the copper pipes there pumping the hot water. It sucks cold air out through the front of here, through the cooling fins and through the water pipes into itself here, spins round, blows out the side, and then blow, I'll just stretch over, blows down the side of this shed. So these two sheds are basically built offset from each other. And that meant then that we could use the concrete walls to, fur, to form the sides of what we call the air tunnel. I hope you can hear me in there. So we'll now go right round to the other side and we'll open the door on the air tunnel and you'll see that as well. While we're passing this, this is obviously the art sugar outside. Drops it into this big box here. We've got Merlot brackets on it. We take it around and empty it. We basically use it for making yards. It sets a little bit like road planings. It's a little bit like cement. We thought it'd have a value. We thought we'd spread it on the field and use it on the field. But when we had it analyzed, it was that efficient burning that there's literally nothing left in it. So it's, it's just not worth putting on the fields. And it makes better use as a yard. So now we're at the front of the boiler again now. There's a dry, there's a, the wood chip that we saw going in. This is a drying floor. So the drying floor works by blowing air down what's called an air tunnel, which is this. We've got hot air now flying down this tunnel. And then underneath it's got ball logs in, because we sometimes dry logs. I'll go around and show you the other side, but basically we blow hot air down that tunnel. And the only way of it escaping is underneath this wall, there's a gap, about a foot gap, so it blows up and then it comes up through the mesh in the floor, the metal floor, which is called bridge plate, which I'll show you in a second, up through the wood chip and it carries the moisture out the wood chip because it's hot air and drives the wood chip in about 24 hours. So we'll go around the other side and see better. So now I'll shut the door, I'll just do this. So this air tunnel is basically sort of a T shape. Can't see on there, can you? Let's see. Let's find some of the drawer. Find some dust in a minute. So it's, it's a T-shape, so the air's coming straight out that fan, but it can also go right as well. And when it goes right, it ends up into this other shed here, which is the one that was built a few feet away from the boiler shed to form the air tunnel. When it blows down the other, the other, down the other sort of the right in the T, if you will, that then we can send it to two different floors. So we'll have, we have three drying floors working off one fan. So at the moment now, one floor has got the hay on we bailed the other day and the other one has got some wood chip on them to drive sand so this this is the air tunnel so you can see it's about 1.2 meters wide formed the concrete so the boiler sat now behind that shed there and that's what i'm saying about the t-shape so the back wall of this shed is the air tunnel for the first floor that we just looked at and then it can do a right and come down here so at the far end of this tunnel Right down there where that light is, there's a sliding door that we can open and close. So when the door's closed, the air just goes straight and goes out through one floor, which is the one right by the boiler. When we open the door, the air then comes down this way, and we can put it underneath that floor there, or underneath that floor, and then rubber flaps on chains there. We lift them up and down, and we hook the chains on these spikes, and then that opens it then, and the air can escape then, and it'll, it'll escape through whatever product we put on the floor. So, just shoot that light off. So when it escapes, it comes up through this stuff, which is basically called bridge plate. So, if you can see, it's got little holes underneath. That's where the air gets forced up, and it's obviously hot air because the boiler's heated it up. That will rise through either it hay, straw, beans, barley, wheat, oilseed rape, wood chip, and that hot air comes up through it, rises through and carries the moisture out. And that's how we dry it. So the whole thing runs off. This is the other bit of the business you see. Rubbish, tree waste. So we obviously get the tree waste. We put it through the wood chipper. We make it look like that. We dry a certain percentage that we use ourselves as fuel and the rest is then sold on. But then the boiler then at the same time as drying its own fuel, it dries other people's fuel and it dries our own grain, our own wheat, our own barley, anything. 
and wood chip for other people. So that's how the biomass boiler works and why we've got it. It means that we can go combining when we want because we're not buying natural gas or oil to run the grain dryers on. We're running off waste. So it makes it really cheap to dry grain. Also, all them roofs up there with the solar panels on provide the electric to run the whole system because it is quite power hungry. But if in the summer we're selling electric and we're drying our own grain, all basically nearly enough off grid, if you will. So I hope you've enjoyed the walk around the boiler and you understand a little bit more why it's here. And um, when I say about the boiler, that's why, that's what we're doing. That's what we've got. And it also provides a use for that waste. So I hope you've enjoyed it. Any comments, any questions, just ask below. That's about it for today, bit of a mismatch. I thought I might not have a chance to do any videos. So that's why I filmed something about the boiler the other day. But yeah, anyway, you've had a good walk around that and then you've also seen where I've been as well today. Normal business is resumed tomorrow because I'm back on the farm. Uh, we've set a bit of a courtyard up with the two motorhomes now. Stop the wind because it's quite windy at the top of the hill yesterday. Anyway, if you want to subscribe, you click there. If you want another video, you watch there. Thanks everyone for watching. Thanks for everyone subscribing. I'll see you all tomorrow. Oh yeah, and yesterday's quiz question was, they were, is it shabby at, sh at sheep? A bit of a mouthful that that's what they were and i was going up cross fell that's the other quiz question as well so that is it for today see you tomorrow